All right. Uh, how's it going out here, everybody in, um, I guess, uh, YouTube, podcast land, whatever you want to, wherever you're watching this at. Um, I am Bill, for those of you who do not know, and I'm, again, humbled to be with my good friend Chuck here, who we've done podcasts together before, and this has been the first time we've actually been on um, camera and talk for a while, and uh, it's good to see you and good to catch up and everything. Yeah, man, we've uh, kept in, in touch by text and stuff, but it's a, it's been a while since we did a Metallica podcast. Yeah, sure has. Yeah. So yeah, it's good good to catch up with you, Bill. We got uh, some cool stuff to talk about today. Yeah, um, and um, so I'll let you kind of um, just uh, kind of let you in the driver's seat and go from there, and um, I'll just kind of come in behind you, and we'll see where it goes. Well, just to give a little bit of a, uh, a background here, um, I was half of the Iced Earth podcast, Podcast in Stone, and a uh, long-time Iced Earth fan, and very much long-time outspoken non-political person. Uh, didn't want to hear it, didn't want to watch it, didn't like it in my music, and I kind of shoot away from most things that was that. Um just it wasn't me and then uh one thing that me and jason was was very anti-political we didn't we had john on there for six hours total and we was like you know hey we don't we don't do politics he's like that's cool and we never discussed it and over the last year with uh the current state of our country and many other factors going on i was kind of woke up and uh Man, before you know it, I'm I'm starting to get political, and things anger me, and uh, I I felt like I almost need to make a John Schaefer statement that I my silence maybe said a lot, but I'm ready to speak out on it. So. Nice. Um, I I know where I know where you're coming from on that, but um, my oh, of course of course I'm. Again, a long time um, Ice Earth fan and a long time supporter of John Schaefer. And uh, basically, I just wanted to say that I've been, a, I've been, I'll be honest with you guys. I've always been political, but I've never really been outspoken until Donald Trump ran for president, right? Um, I, um, I didn't care, and um, I didn't care for Obama. I didn't like any of his policies and it has not for those people who out there may be watching has nothing to do with his skin color or anything like that. I don't care who you are. If you're a great person and you got great policies or whatever, I could care. I could care your rate, I, your race or anything or whatever. I'll vote for that person that I think is right and best for the country at the time. And, um, really, uh, for those people out here, January 6th is kind of a, big thing and it you know whatever and it's it's actually kind of riled myself up a little bit more than i probably was ever since the whole debacle thing um kind of happened and so i've always wanted to talk on this but i just never really felt like um how to come out about and doing it i had thought about one time just writing a big like message on internet and saying how i felt but i kind of felt like in a way maybe the words wouldn't come out the way i wanted them to so actually i'm glad to be doing this and maybe i can finally say some things i wanted to say yeah and kind of how this came about is i i had told you that i was thinking about doing a uh just a video for the just on the put on the facebook group i hadn't posted on there in a long time and you're like hey if you want somebody to come along i'm like man let's do it and we kind of talked about it and here we are the the day before the fourth of july maybe you're watching this on the fourth of july and uh, i thought it was time to talk about a few things okay um before we do that i wanted to throw in a tidbit for everybody out there um today um and for those of you who do not know today is the last was uh, in 1863 um in july Today is the last day of the third day of the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, really? And this was, um, this was the, and for those people who do not know or are not really history 
it was a turning point of the Civil War. It was the it was the point to where the Northern Army finally says, "Hey, you know, we can actually win this thing," and so and they wound up did. But for those of you who do not know, January first, second, and third was a three day battle of Gettysburg, and um, so I just wanted to say um, I just want to say thank you for those people who gave their lives for a cause, whether right or wrong or whatever you think it calls or just or whatever it was in the end, they were all Americans, whether you, you know, however you want to look at it. And, um, they paid an ultimate sacrifice. And for those people who do not know in three days, over 53,000 people lost their soul, lost their lives on the, um, battlefields of Gettysburg. And that was more than the actual Vietnam war. So, brothers, brothers brother. against brothers. Mm-hmm. Have you, and before we get into it, have you ever seen the? Uh, and uh, forgive me if I forget the name of the the official Ice Earth DVD. Was it for for? Was it called Gettysburg? Yeah, I actually have that. Have you, Have you ever watched where he goes on a tour with this old dude and they? They go through it's like an hour and like fifteen minutes, and he yeah, just that's an incredible. I've watched that probably more than most concerts I have. Yeah, I actually that was actually for a long time there. That was actually probably one of my favorite Iced Earth uh, DVDs they had put out. Yeah, and then there's like a, a Q and A of him sitting. I think probably just at home, and he's got a big dog sitting on the floor with yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, that's a cool video. Yeah, so. Okay, well, thanks for the little history there. I didn't yeah. didn't realize that. Um, so, so where do we start here? Um, January sixth. Yeah, that's that's fine. That sounds good. That sounds good to me. Well, I, I'm going to kind of bring it down a level here, just for a little personal talk. And January sixth, I. Um, me and Jason had took a break from the podcast. I had um, had lost my uh, my stepdaughter, and she was 23. And uh, I was going through a lot and uh, dealing with family stuff. And then, not long after, just a month or so after this, my my uh, oldest son passed away, 23 also. So you can imagine the uh, just the personal strain and everything that I was going through and you know what so for the longest time I I didn't really have much like when I first heard about it I didn't realize how big it was I was like oh you know just somebody was protesting or whatever you, you know and then of course it turned out to be a very big deal but um just mindset I, I think that I kind of since I wasn't very political at the time, I almost kind of took it personal. Like I was, I was upset that, you know, one of my favorite things was taken from me and I kind of withdrew from many, many people. And the few people that I still stay in contact are probably the persistent ones. And, you know, I just want to apologize for everybody I've lost, you know, contact with, you know, from, from Gene, Bill, you know, John, um, everybody, and just countless people that I used to talk with that I kind of isolated myself from and just put myself in a cocoon. So enough of that. So fast forward, you know, a couple years, and it's like, wow, I, I find myself you know, watching videos and stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm a Republican and just everything I don't like and this and that. And then the more, as I said today, you know, John Schaefer used to be a hero of mine, you know, because he wrote uh, Dante's Inferno. And now, now he's such a hero of mine because of his patriotism. And the last text or the last email I got from him and I, I can't remember the time frame on it, but he's like, 
man, watch out. It's, it's getting bad out there. And I was like, what a, you know, huh? And he's just such a hero. And there's so many, so many rock stars that, you know, can get a, a demon or fire breathing dragon or something. But look at, look at his arm. Take the time and look at the tattoos on his arm. I mean, that guy loves America and he's one of the most smartest people, you know, and um, I, I hate the way that things turned out, but uh, Trump 2024, all that's going to get overturned soon. Uh, you know, I, I say definitely after uh, Captain uh, Oatmeal, the corrupt puppet, the way he acted last last week, I don't see how anybody with their right mind. And here, here's where we could start pissing people off. Could, could, and, and, you know, I, I get, if you look at Trump and you say, I don't like him, I don't like his attitude. That's fine. Can you live with another four years? Like what we just had, you know, so where, where are you at, Bill? I've talked, let me hear you talk for a couple. Well, for, uh, first of all, let me, let, let, let me keep this off for a second. If I don't know if you, um, have heard the latest, but um, I was just watching the news a few minutes ago, and now there's a big debate on um, whether Joe is deciding if he's going to actually stay running or not. He might actually drop out. Um, I know he's supposed to meet with some of the Democratic, uh, some of the big Democratic uh, guy, people in Senate or whatever it is, and I guess they're going to talk over a strategy. But there's, there may be a chance that he's dropping out. Um, well, so. from the last thing that I saw that I think the Democratic Party is so afraid that something's going to happen to him if he does remain president, God help us all. Yeah. That they, I don't think any of them want that idiot Kamala running the country. Oh, my God. So, so they're definitely thinking, and I mean, I don't even want to think about that, but I don't know how anyone could put faith, one, that he'd be alive in four years, let alone just... I mean, if I was doing a, a, a Deadpool, it'd be him. I'd pick him. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, mean, I know, right? And he wants to sit there and say he could outdrive. I don't think he could outdrive Donald Trump if he had a car. The only person that could outdrive Donald Trump's Happy Gilmore. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, um, it doesn't surprise me. I know that a lot of people the Democrats were really hyping him up and talking about how with it he was and how together he was and how sharp. And I mean, if you have to, to tell somebody that they're really sharp, how sharp are they? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me at all that with the, the beat down, the Monday night raw type uh, beating that Biden took. I mean, he just looked out of it. And, and uh, I'm going to take a second before Bill starts here. If you're a Biden person, we love ice earth. We're still brothers. We're just, we're just talking John and some politics and uh, you know, still love you. Yeah. Um, well, you know, here, here's the, here's my whole thing, right? Um, I'm trying, I'm gonna try not to get into this too much. Um, I have been, um, I actually, it was funny. I actually did a YouTube video here, like, like last year, year before last, something like that, about how I said that the 2020 election was, I don't, I want to use the right word so I don't get a copyright strike or get a check on my, on my account. Let's just say that I don't think the election was fair, okay? Um, so let's put it like that, okay? Um, and if you didn't believe that at first, um, fast forward to today, and you see all the things that are happening, how stumbling, bumbling, falling upstairs, Joe, um, who can barely put two sentences together. I mean, the man, I mean, no offense, I thought Ozzy was bad. But Joe's got him beat, man. I mean, Joe needs a like an interpreter wherever he goes, right? Okay. Um, yeah. 
Except Sorry. for whoever the Sharon that's doing his strings is is running our country. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyway, so that whole January sixth thing, um, it's I understand it, and probably a lot more than a lot of people uh, do. And um, so, um, anyway, so I just wanted to say that. Um, you know, people can sit there and condemn people if they want to over that. But when you sit back and you look at all the things that, that, that has transpired or whatever, you would understand why it happened. And um, I, like I said, I don't want to get into some big rant because we only have so much time. But right. as soon as we get talking more into John, I'll kind of get into a little bit more of what I wanted to say and how all this is going to come together or whatever. And to bring it back, I, I don't want to name names here, but I talked to somebody who was talking to John the day it happened. And the way that they set that up, the way they had those buildings open, almost encouraging them, them people to come in. I mean, just the, if I mean, if they didn't want those people in those buildings, that that's Washington. They wouldn't have been in those buildings. You know what I'm saying? The, they didn't knock doors down. Those doors were open. Well, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. And it just now, I mean, again, selfishly, I, I wish John was at home writing a book that night. Or, you know, again, that that's just totally that's just me just being a, a, a selfish fan. And, and I as a person, you know, I I. I totally have made peace with the fact that we may never hear another John Schaefer song ever again. Uh, God, I hope not. But at this point, I care about the person so much more than I ever cared about an album. John is somebody that I just have uh, such respect for and just the time that he's gave me as, as a, a no, you know, as just a nobody fan that, you know, the hours and hours that we've talked online and he's been so cool, you know, that, that goes well beyond the, the music thing. And I, I've rambled so long. I forget my point even. It's all right. Um, I'll probably wind up doing that myself. So, um, but no, um, I just wanted to say as far as a fan, right. Um, John's music has helped me through some really dark times in my life. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't like talking about a lot of things, but anxiety, um, depression is a, uh, is a real thing for those people out there who think that, um, you know, some people are just, you know, they, they act the way they do just because of whatever. But, um, no, his music has helped me through a lot of, a lot of dark times. Um, I don't even know, maybe I might not even be here if it wasn't for John and his music, right? Um, and, um, so I've always supported John Schaefer, even when other people w wouldn't and didn't, um, when everybody turned their, I'm not saying everybody, I understand some people had, had to wrap their, their minds and everything around everything. So I'm not speaking to, to everybody, but what I'm saying is for those people that turned their backs on John in a time when, and in a situation they didn't understand, um, I was one of those people out there. I was like, yeah, I hated it that, you know, we may not never get another song from John or no more iced earth or anything. But, um, I will say that, um, as far as a person, like I never really, I never, re never talked to John. I've only ever seen this podcast. He seems like a really cool dude. And through the podcast, you know, I've got to meet Gene or I've got to talk to Gene and me and Gene's become real close and all that stuff. Um, hopefully one day we're actually going to get to meet up and I can actually, you know, get to see, talk to Gene face to face. But, um, what I'm saying is this, is that, um, John is a true patriot. John is a, a great guy. And yeah, sometimes we all fall short of things. And maybe at the time in the situation, maybe he didn't realize things were just going to go down the way they did. But in the end, you know, we all, you know, we all make mistakes. And for those people out there who can't give somebody a second chance, 
or give somebody some leniency and being like, hey, you know, maybe, you know, the situation got out of hand and this was whatever. There's a lot that we don't know. And there's probably a lot we'll never know until we actually hear something from John himself. And I understand why we haven't. You know, I've always said, why couldn't John have come out and make some kind of a statement to his fans? But it probably has something to do with his I'm sure it's all, right. and all that stuff and all that. And someday I think we will. Um, but my and myself, as long as as long as John is doing good and he's, you know, healthy and living his life and doing whatever John wants to do, man, I hope he's out there, you know, being, um, you know, doing what he needs to do to get you know, out from under all this stuff. And I sure hope uh, Trump wins um, come November because he, I'm pretty sure he's going to pardon all those January 6th people. And then yeah. John don't have to worry about anything then. And uh, so, yeah, um, that's just me um, as, as talking as a fan. So, Okay, so touching on a couple of things you talked about. One, I also would love to meet Gene. He is actually the only ice earth lead singer that I haven't met in, in person. Oh, nice. Which, which is crazy. So, uh, Gene, I, I look forward to possibly getting to see you go dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. he knows what that means. Um, as far as the fan backlash, we're used to, and uh, again, during this time I was keeping totally silent, wasn't saying nothing. I remember me and, that reminds me, I, I am not speaking for Podcast and Stone. This is just American Republican Chuck. I am not speaking for Jason. Um, me and Jason swore to never talk politics on the show. Um, so I am speaking for just me, not Jason. I am not speaking for the podcast. But um, one thing that angered me as this was going on, you know, when the, the sentencing was going on and all that stuff, Vince Neal from Motley Crue killed a guy and seems like no, no backlash at all on Motley Crue. You know, John did this and there's, there's, I seen, you know, you know, people breaking CDs and stuff. And, you know, iced earth had to totally turn off their messages on everything because of idiots. Me and Jason had to, start monitoring our group which was something we never did were you surprised by and is that just the casuals or just the you know what's the word i'm looking for the trolls well i think i think the trolls had something to do with it but i honestly think that a lot of it had to do with those people out there who wasn't really true ice earth fans or really wasn't true um just fans of whatever. It is. See, you have to understand that in today's world, people get triggered easily by dumb stuff, right? Um, and I just, and I think that, like, honestly, and I'm going to say this, and this is no knock towards <laughs> anybody, right? Okay? Sure. But you have poser rock and rollers out there, and you have poser fans out there. And I think what it, what it all amounts out to be is that um, you have these poser ice earth fans out here who was oh yeah, you know, I'm so I'm so John Schaefer, I can't stand it. But then when he done something like that, oh now I gotta break his CDs and I hate John Schaefer and blah blah blah, all this right here. Well, here's my thing, right? Um, would you rather have a real John Schaefer who did what he done or a poser John Schaefer who was out here being fake and phony? and all that right there why are you mad because he wasn't fake and phony so he could be more like you or whatever um i know that's probably gonna piss some people off but you know i i'm, I'm in the business where i don't care if i piss people off or not if, if i'm not pissing somebody off then i'm not doing my job well bill we live in a world right now where the smart have to silent themselves to not offend the stupid and people are just have this kind of pussy mentality like you hurt my feelings you know when you know like uh it, it aggravates me and and john saw this coming and and he 
even at dystopia era which was 2011 yeah something like that he, he knew where this thing was coming yeah and you you'll you'll get somebody with purple hair saying i identify as a swamp rat <laughs> and go palestine and here's my brightly colored flag but you know what i don't want you to have your gun and i the american flag offends me that that's the country we live in right now well i'm fixing to piss some people off but if you hate american you hate the flag there's somewhere else you can live well i think that anybody that's been pissed off by the things we said they're probably long gone yeah well and and, and again this is this is just our forum for for talking politics america john schaefer patriotism you know we don't mean to offend people if, if you vote the other way you know don't <laughs> stay at home well so, i'm i'm, I'm going to put it like this chuck and, and this is my philosophy if you say and do dumb shit, then you have a right to be offended exactly as as the thing as the saying goes play stupid games win stupid prizes exactly exactly so um and back to the musical thing I, there's another thing i want to touch base on recently hansi has come out kind of backside supporting john i want to know what your thoughts were when the three some uh everybody but brent basically said deuces i'm out of iced earth do you how did you feel when that uh statement came across oh <sighs> and, and we're right. talking uh uh luke stew and um i forgot his name but go no. on uh, anyway i myself was surprised because i thought ice earth was a brotherhood right and yes brothers brothers fight brothers do everything brothers make mistakes but you're supposed to have your brother's back you're supposed to have your brother six right now i understand but see here's the problem i have okay now if i'm not mistaken john and brett were the only two in the band from this country right um no the guitarist lives out in california okay. weatherfall okay well i know Stu and uh luke were from i think uh, uh, I know, Stu, uh canada luke uh united kingdom okay yeah so England. what i was gonna say was as far as those two guys and look i have nothing personally against anybody okay right i just want i want to come out and say that right um but I wanted to say, for them being from another country like that, you don't understand um, what it's like to be an American and what it's like to have to sit here and fight for some kind of freedom and have your rights taken away from you and knowing there's a good chance that if such and such person gets into power, like... They've been for a long time wanting to turn this country into a socialist country, right? Okay. Exactly. Um, okay. My thing is this. Whether you agree with January 6th or not, right? Everybody's had some form of January 6th. Whether you're from Canada, whether you're from UK, wherever. Everybody's kind of had their kind of, oh, uh, what's that? Um, uh the alt roar or their um kind of rebellion against their country for some odd reason right okay right. that just happened to be ours and we were um trying to even i'm not saying that it would have done anything as far as overturning the election but people wanted to be heard and people wanted to wanted to right. their voices known that hey look we don't agree with what went down and how this went down and we think there were a lot of shady stuff going on. And, um, you know, that was just our way of thinking. And and what I don't understand about people, and, and this is where the whole government has, or 
the, the liberal media has turned this into an insurrectionist. And I'm going to say this, and um, so people may not understand this. Do you really think, and I'm sorry if I use some colorful language, but um, but <laughs> do you really fucking think that those people were going to go overthrow a government with not a gun in sight? Okay? Honestly, we have the most powerful military in all the world. Okay, you really think that those people were going to make that big of a difference? Because all they had to do was call in the National Guard and it was over with. And for those of you who do not know, there's been a video that just come out here recently with Nancy Pelosi talking about how it was her fault because she never, um, Trump wanted the National Guard to be there and she said no. And then she yep, says, I, oh, seen I, that. Was wrong. I was wrong. I should have had them there. Okay. You really honestly think that those people were going to overthrow the government without a gun in sight. That's what the Second Amendment is for. Okay, for those of you who do not understand, see, um, I'm, I'm going to kind of get into a little background here for a minute, and I promise I won't take up much time. But I, um, I'm a history buff. Been to Gettysburg. Um, I don't live too far from a um, Revolutionary War park. Um, I've done a lot of reading, and because of John, I've actually got into the more of the Civil War, kind of the politics more of the reading my um reading my constitution and all that stuff like he really turned me on to a lot of stuff that that before i mean i was a buff but i never was i never really went in deep into the stuff like i did and i think what kind of spurred that on was that gettysburg dvd he put out um right and anyway so for those of you you have to go and read your constitution and understand it um and thing i hate is those people out here who go out here and talk through the side of their face and they don't understand what they're talking about because they don't take the time to read the constitution um my whole thing is right like you have to know the situation before you can sit there and judge people and, and make this big deal about things and so for those people who are um just they don't understand that Maybe um, maybe you should go and um, kind of take a history lesson or whatever. But uh, I kind of got off a tangent there. But what I wanted to say, and, and I never understood, and and maybe it's a good thing and maybe it wasn't. I know Brett never made a statement. I don't know why that yeah. was. Um, I don't know if it's um, because. <laughs> go ahead. Jake, Jacob was the other one, and I apologize, Jacob. He's a... A, a great dude. I love. I love Witherfall. Um, now, f timeline, and I, I'm trying to remember back. Was COVID still going when this stuff was, when that statement was made by the three? Uh, I'm not sure. I want to think wanna it was. It. Yeah, I think we was kind of getting on the backside of it, though. I think. Okay. Around about that time. Here's here's my take on the three, and we're talking the the day the the statement came out, and uh, Jacob and Luke and Stu was all like, "We're no longer nice to Earth." Looking back, as as a person with a family and someone who provides for my family, I, I have no ill will toward toward any of those three, and they're all super super cool people i i like all three of them a lot um luke's uh luke's girlfriend becky is in uh merciful fate now did you know that no i didn't know that yeah she's the bass player of merciful fate now I, I i love those guys and Stu has been so cool to me you know in some of the conversations <clears throat> that we've had off the air and stuff and just texting and stuff um about cats and stuff so I, I, with, I have no ill ill will towards them. And Hansi has has recently came out and made a you know perhaps everybody's a little tough on John statement. Um, man, I really hope this Trump thing goes through and this stuff gets swept under a complete rug that it should be. Yeah. Um. And, uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was, <clears throat> go ahead, buddy. 
<clears throat> well, no, I was just going to say, like I said, I mean, it's nothing. I have nothing against any of those guys either. I've never talked to any of them. You know, I've, you know, any, any of that stuff. I just, I just kind of felt like that. I, I felt like a lot of people jump the ship way too soon and at least try to let, even, even if John couldn't come out and make a public statement, at least got together with them guys and been like, Hey, look, you know, this is the situation. This is why I done what I done, why I done it and all that stuff. I just kind of felt like that everybody jumped ship and didn't really, I'm not, I'm not saying they didn't. Now I don't know. Like I said, I don't know none of the, behind the scenes type stuff but i just kind of felt like that you know um it was a thing to where and even hansi had at one time you know um had kind of you know jumped on jumped the ship a little early too i think and like i said i it it's one of those things where you do what you think is right for you and i understand these people had families and everything i get all that i mean i understand that to the fullest extent but I just kind of felt like that, and and now and and I wanted to say this, and I think through it all, and it's funny how because of you guys, John and Gene reunited and become, you know, like brothers again after what was it, almost thirty years or something or whatever. And I look back now and I think, wow, how like Gene is the one guy, one of the one one of the former bandmates has really stood behind John through all this stuff or whatever, yeah. and um and everything and kudos to eugene if you see this or whatever um i love you brother um you um we we talk a lot and uh you know i've had it i've interviewed gene on my um show and stuff and everything and gene's just a really cool down to earth dude hold on i'm sorry Hello. um right, I'll be here for a few minutes all right bye every time i see some of those pictures from uh those John Schaefer's purgatory uh, sessions with Bill and uh, Gene and John, it just, it, it pleases me. It pleases my heart to see those guys together. And when you threw in Greg and stuff for those, they went out to eat and stuff. It's so cool to see those pictures. Yep. Um, some really cool people. Yep. Um, so, Go ahead, brother. No, I, I I didn't know what you was going. Um, I didn't know if you was fit to lead into something else. No, I was just kind of just making sure we discussed everything. You know, this wasn't a. Uh, oh, I, I was going to say back to the uh, Hansi thing. One thing that we also have to consider is we're not famous. Yeah. If we piss, if we piss somebody off, there's not going to be anything on the news tonight about chuck and bill's podcast yeah you know people we live in a world where people have to watch what they say and they have to take very calculated you know of who they associate with and yeah. what they you know what they say so i have a you know i get it i get it i i, I love those guys you know i got no problem with Stu or any of those guys for for what they did. I, I love John and I know that they do. It's just a, the situation that they got into that it's just, you know, they had to make a decision and I stand by him on that. Well, I mean, I, mean I, I understand that too. I mean, you know, so that that's something you also have to consider with, with all that is, you know, we don't have to watch what we say. If you're, I mean, would John have been picked out if he wouldn't have been famous or would he have just went home that night? You know what I'm saying? True. So, you know, and, uh, I just kind of wanted to, to get on here and just, you know, explain my absence a little bit, explain. I know I've been invited to a group, uh, John Schaefer loyalist or whatever. I didn't, didn't join. I, w I used to be so anti-politics, didn't want to hear it. Um, but I just wanted to, to kind of explain my silence and, you know, explain why I hadn't said anything really about John. And for a while I didn't have anything to say now, you know, 
I, I've said my piece. I think he's a true patriot, and yep. I think that his love. I if if most of the people that were in office love this country thirty percent of what he does, this this country would be booming right now. Yeah, exactly. But you got tyranny, you got puppets, and you got corrupt people that have certain agendas and they want they want to open those walls open and have people come in and work for for cheaper wages and you know get money from other countries that they shouldn't be yeah i mean you follow the corruption and i'm not saying donald church sit and sits and prays on sunday morning for 2 hours before you know <laughs> going and working yeah. in a soup kitchen but yeah. i mean john wasn't just making stuff up john's was spot on on everything he told us and everything we needed to watch out for and you know the whole mass stuff and you know the way covid was handled and the way they wanted to shut down the schools i mean how did that work out for us know. you know kids kids have became unruly kids started coming back saying i'm a zzer yeah you know just nonsense and then you got you know democrats that want to make us wear a mask and take unproven shots and vaccinations where they're getting kickbacks on and then yeah. if me and you try to fly out of the country or somewhere we're at the airport for two hours getting looked through and then they, they wave just anybody and everybody. We're talking about yeah. people from prisons and insane asylums. They just wave them and say, come on in. Yeah. I mean, John knew about it. John called us on it and you know, it, it's, it's a messed up situation that he's catching any slack for anything. Yeah. And I just, I just wanted to, to talk about it for a few. Well, I want to say this, and um, like I said, this probably pissed some people off, but that's fine. Um, John was not a poser metal, um, was not a poser rock star, if that's what you want to call it. And he was a he wasn't a poser patriot. Not people are gonna go out and finance an album like brush uh, like brush fires on the mind, right? If you're a poser, okay, seriously. And had the artwork and the, all the quotes and stuff that were in that album, the way John done that, if John wasn't a true patriot, okay? I, that was the one thing that I loved about John so much was, and actually, you know, besides I Surf, that's probably like one of my favorite records. I've, I've listened to that album uh, uh, many a times because, um, you know, it, when you sit back and you think about these things, um, you know, all the stuff that John was talking about has come true. And a lot of the stuff that John talks about is the truth, whether things um, when you realize today just how much they're hiding the truth from people and how much they're um, uh, sugar, uh, there's um, scapegoat and everything. You'll see that those people like that were were right and and like i said the whole whole january 6th thing right okay you 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 can call that an inner insurrection if you want to but like i said earlier those people were not going to do shit yet and if you watch any of the and if you watch any of the videos on that whole situation where the videos and stuff that cnn and M M msnbc and all those other websites didn't show was they they had they had security officers walking around with people in the damn capital. That one dude that was dressed like a damn was a bull or whatever the hell he was, or some kind of Viking or something other, whatever. This dude, right? He was just lounging around in there, like, you know, hey, I'm out for a Sunday stroll. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, if that was such a big thing, then why then why are you making such a big deal out of it? The Black Lives Matter riots were a whole lot more devastating than January 6th, but yet they praised that. Um, like, I could go on and on about a lot of things, but we don't sure. have time. Um, well, there, there was also somebody that was 
on the Democratic side that wouldn't allow um, churches to during COVID to yeah. to have services outside socially distanced, but then was going to defund police rallies. Yeah, I mean, the, there's so much corruption that it's just, you know, and like you said, he's been saying it all along. And uh, I kind of turned a deaf ear for a while and I, I just can't anymore. Yeah, I, I, I registered. This will be my first time voting. My boys are both voting Trump with me. Yep. And, uh, and he like politics aside, like, you know, if you are not a political person, the 35% inflation in four years should be enough to say I'm flipping sides. Yeah. Like if you're not a political person at all and you don't like any of Trump's whatever, that's fine. I don't want another 30% inflation. That's true. And I mean, and not just, and not just on things, but um, just kind of keep it just to kind of keep it on like the music side of it or whatever. Right. Just, um, I'm just going to throw this out here. I'm a big vinyl connoisseur. If you can see behind me there, I have a, a you know, a decent vinyl collection. Okay. Vinyl has gone up to, to drastically since the 2020 election. Okay. Um, Vinyl has got so outraged to the point to where I only have to buy those select things that I want. Used to, I used to, when, you know, I would just buy like vinyl. Oh man, such and such got an album out. I got to get it. Now it's like, do I really want this person um, or whatever? And maybe I'll just get the CD instead. And then maybe later on down the road, you know, when things may be a little bit better and if the vinyl's still available, I'll pick it up or something, right? So the whole thing is the whole thing about it is right. Um, you know, everything has gone up, and it, people's paying more for everything. And um, for those people out here who work forty-hour day job, a forty-hour week jobs, um, whether you work eight, ten, twelve hours a day, or sometimes maybe even more. Um, for those people out here who are rich and don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Yeah. The inflation may not bother you as much, but for those, for us people who live paycheck, to paycheck yeah, the common, have, common middle man, class. Yeah. Middle class guy. Inflation is killing us. So like I said, um, whether, like I said, whether you agree with anything we said today or not, right. Um, go. I just want to throw this out here to people. Okay. Um, don't let the liberal media influence you on how you feel and think. If you want to know something, there's truth out there if you go read it. I will say something for a guy who once years and years and years and years ago who wanted to be a history teacher, right? Um, I have learned a lot more in probably the last 10 or 15 years in history than I ever have um, in my entire life. And a lot of that's just researching, going to library, you know, going to libraries, checking out books, which is a dinosaur thing today now, but can anybody can just get just by anything you want anywhere. But seriously, the truth is out there. If you're willing to go find it, the problem is, is this generation is so lazy that they don't want to go find it. So they just accept whatever people is telling them it's the gospel, right? Okay. Listen, like even even with the civil war and all this stuff and and all this stuff that john's been telling us the stuff and even the stuff he sings about and all the stuff that you know he talked about as being a patriot and all that stuff when it comes to american history and from you know from the beginning of this country from the american revolution or before till now or whatever it is the real truth is out there if you'll go look for it um and just don't take one narrative and and let that be your whole thing. Um, you, I will honestly guarantee. John was right about one thing, and I use a quote that John used to say. He said, "You can read one book and and think you're a genius. You can read three hundred books um, and find out you're an idiot." And I forgot that some and, re, and some other or something. He said, and "Then somewhere you'll find the truth in the middle." Right. He said that right. on the Gettysburg DVD. Right. Okay. That's how much I used to watch that DVD because I almost 
quoted that from um, from that DVD. Okay, um, so for those guys, for those people out here who do not understand your constitution, do not understand history at all, believe me, the truth is out there if you're willing to go find it. Well said, my friend, and I'm the perfect example. I'm 51 years old, had never voted for anything in my life. And I woke up one day and I was like, you know what? I'm, I want to be educated. I want to find out what's going on in, in, you know, in my government. And I'm glad I did. So if you think you're too old or you think your vote doesn't matter, or that's what I used to always say. Yep. You know, find out, yep. you know, so this is, I know we wanted to keep this at, a, at about an hour underneath. Um, I just want to close and uh, saying thank you, John, for, for everything. Yep. And I think there's a good chance that he might end up checking this out. So, and uh, if you want us to do, you know, more chats like this, leave your comments if you say this is i don't like this leave that in the comments too we'll read everything yep so but i just wanted to close i wanted to say too thank you john for the music for foremost um thank you for your patriotism thank you for all the things that you've woken us up to over the years um we love you john um we hope that soon you know you'll be back doing Maybe making music again, and if that's not what you want to do, you know, whatever your endeavors are, I hope you find happiness and success in it or whatever. Um, but I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, don't let one action define a person, okay? And, and don't let one action make you feel a certain way about a person until you really get to know them, until you see their heart and their soul and everything like that. Um, John Schaefer is a good person. We all make mistakes. We all, um, we all sometimes fall. And, and, you know, I don't. I don't want to get a lot of religious on people because there might be some not non-religious people in here. And, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, but we all fall short short of the glory of God all the time. And um, whether you know, and we'll never we'll never be able to um, to you know, be able to be. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is we'll never be able to achieve that glory because we're, we're human beings and we're not perfect and all that stuff. So, like I said, for those people who want to John, who wants to jump on that, um, I hate John Schaefer train. One of these days that train's going to derail and, um, you're going to be stuck in a uh, world of, of, uh, just, you know, stupidity and, and, junk and all that stuff and um if you can't give someone a second chance then you know, that that's on you that's the way i look at it well um you you started off with the uh the talking about gettysburg and the the thousands and thousands of people that gave their life and gave the ultimate sacrifice i mean look look what john sacrificed for what he believed in yep and it it hopefully won't, but it could have ended up being career suicide. Yeah. And he did it for, for the love of his country. I mean, that's how many of us would do that. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, yeah. you know, couldn't afford it to give that up. And everybody needs to thank him. And, you know, like you said, get the knowledge and, you know, yeah. people are sick of the tyranny and the corruption that's going on and you know i don't own a gun but i think that you should be able to have one if you want one you know it's it's crazy so uh i, I really enjoyed chatting with you sorry my little buddy came in here at the end oh no hey hey that's cool um, <laughs> and uh know. he wanted to talk about john schaefer too no, that's right? all right no, hey, so, uh, more, more than welcome I enjoyed the chat. I uh, yeah. enjoyed talking a uh, little ice earth, a little John Schaefer, a little politics. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So, okay, uh, 
let's uh let's do this again sometime man i mean i know our schedules and everything and you know we all have like you know difficult lives and stuff like that but um i'd, I'd really like to do something like this again and maybe we can get into more more in-depth things on like all this stuff and actually have time to where we can just kind of delve into this stuff and really break it down and all that stuff that'd be really cool i had a lot of fun i need you to push me I, i'm bad about just getting lost in life so keep on me brother that's all right man hey we um you know um that's i that's totally understandable i am the same way man so you know so plus, plus you're married you got kids and all that stuff and i'm not so i mean i have a little bit more freedom of time but hey you know it's all understandable bro i mean i i family god and family and country over everything else so you know so yeah nice chatting with you brother and yep. uh until next time send us home brother all right man well guys this has been bill and this is chuck again here um bringing you some iced earth john schaefer uh politics january 6 all this good stuff i hope now maybe you'll see a different light on different things or whatever and um like i said if you want the truth that's out there just go look for it and uh thanks again guys i hope y'all watch this and hope you Maybe take a different uh, look at things after you uh, watch this video. And if not, hey, you know what? Hey, at least, you know, we tried. You know what I'm saying? So uh, anyway, like I said, my good friend, my brother, Chuck, um, it was good seeing you again. Um, good doing this. And like I said, man, um, maybe we can do something else in the future. So I like that. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank everybody out here. We love y'all. And uh, y'all have a great day.